the black people talk their own disempowerment is written into their very language and uh, their own disunity and all of these other unharmonics that uh, keep our community fragmented and thus vulnerable to exploitation by not only the whites but now we see the Lebanese coming in exploiting us, the, the Koreans exploiting us, the Pakistanis and the Indians exploiting us. Uh, we can see ourselves so very vulnerable because there has been written into this language of this subculture a language of self-defeat. Yes, but see, uh, actually... There are only three categories of people when you start talking about race. See, and that's important, you know. And here again, you'll be changing the language when you do that. Because so-called officially, there are many categories of racial classifications. Uh, I think somewhere it stands now, it started off with three at one time. That was black, white, and mulatto. Uh, one of the official classifications, rather. They probably had different classifications even before they made it so-called, quote-unquote, official, whatever that means. Uh, but I have a chart that shows that in the eight, late 1800s, uh, the official classifications were just three, white, black, and mulatto. Now, here in the year 2004, uh, just before this year, the latest classifications uh, ranged all the way up to uh, something like 20, I believe, somewhere in the neighborhood of, of 17 to 20 classifications. I haven't made uh, an exact count, but you have all kinds of classifications such as Shamoro, uh, you have Korean, you have African American, and of course at the top you have white. Uh, all of the classifications since the 1800s, the top classification is always at the top of all classifications when you start talking about race it's always been white it starts off with white just that standing alone not a breakdown not white irish not white french not white italian just white and then after that you have other classifications but these classifications are set up presumably by white people and they tell other people what the classifications are. And that gives the white supremacists absolute control since they do all the classifying. Uh, they allow other people to classify themselves, but it always comes second to white. I think I'm looking at the 2000 uh, classification right now on a chart that I'm looking at. Uh, at the top you have white. Next, you have black, African-American, or Negro. That's one continuous classification. You can take your choice, black, African-American, or Negro. Then you have Chinese, then American Indian or Alaska Native, Japanese, Filipino, Asian Indian, Korean. These are all separate. Native Hawaiian, Vietnamese, Guamanian or Chamorro, Samoyan. And then you have another in bold print, other Asian. Hmm. Now these are the different uh, ethnic communities within the United States. These, you no, say? these are called official racial classifications worldwide. I mm -hmm. mean, see there. See when you talk about race, and that's another thing. And black people should get in the habit of thinking about that too. Anytime anything about race is mentioned, you're no longer talking about boundaries. Hmm as far as ge geography is concerned. See, the minute you mention it, you've been talking about a race problem. A race problem is universal. It, it's global. We are at the point we need to take our first break of the hour. Our guest today is Neely Fuller, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got a lot more to go with this conversation. When we return, we're going to welcome you, the LIB radio audience. You can talk to Neely Fuller, the developer of the construct known as the United Independent Compensatory Code and uh, the system for, uh, you know, our system for reversing and redefining our relationship with the white power structure. You, the LIB Radio audience, you know that you are the critical part of this conversation. So do stick with us. We're going to take a short musical break. We will be right at black. Don't you go nowhere, LIB Radio. And all the people that came here to represent. 
um, Brother Khaled is definitely uh, a true warrior in the cause of black struggle. Right. What I'd like to say as a young black youth is that I feel that America has sub sub subjected me to a holocaust. You understand? From from all my ancestors all the way back to even right now, Rodney King, the brother of Staten Island, mm -hmm. all we've been subject to is death and destruction here. And as far as Jewish people in the Bible, they say that you are of the synagogue of Satan. And I'd like to what ask you people, why do you feel that you have cornered the market on sympathy? And why can't you feel the pain of the black holocaust? Why do you think that when we say the black holocaust that it's some blasphemous statement? I'd like for y'all to address that. To all of our people all around the world, we welcome you today to LIV Radio. It is Wednesday, the 14th of December. The time right now is 6.53 a.m. on the West Coast. That's 9.53 a.m. for our East Coast listeners. And that is 2.53 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. We have with us uh, Mr. Neely Fuller, the author of Landmark Research Work on how we, people of African descent, we, the people of Hugh, can't resist being unwittingly caught up in a system outside of our control. We're going to invite all of you 
to be a part of our conversation today. You can talk directly to Neely Fuller, ask a question, you leave a comment. You know that you're welcome. Give us a call on our West Coast line, the telephone number is 347-215-5433.